What's good YouTube? Today's video is going to be a Retribution Paladin guide for 10.1 in Dragonflight. We're going to cover everything for the Retribution Paladin from talents to tier sets, rotations, stats and consumables, any macros you might want to use and I'll also go over my overall thoughts on this spec at the end of this video. So if this video does help you out then please feel free to drop a like down below and also subscribe to your boy, but let's crack on with the guide. Rep Paladin had a massive rework to their talent trees which ended up in a massive amount of interest from players to check it out and for good reason too. There's generally two different builds for the Rep Pala, one that's focused around Templar Strikes and the other is based around Crusading Strikes. Both are relatively equal in damage so you can just pick the playstyle you prefer. In the class tree we'll be taking Auras of the Resolute so that we can use Devotion Aura and reduce all party members damage taken by 3% at all times. After this we'll come down and take our main mobility in Divine Steed and buff this up with Cavalier so that it now has two charges. On the right side we'll take our single target interrupt in Rebuke and weirdly enough Paladins actually have their main cooldown stored in their class tree so we'll pick up Avenging Wrath increasing our damage and healing done by 20% for 20 seconds. Also allowing us to use Hammer of Wrath on any target regardless of their current health. We'll take Blessing of Sacrifice as some solid utility reducing the target's damage taken by 30% but causing us to suffer 100% of the damage prevented. Get ready to spam this on your hunter friends. An important note to note is Unbound Freedom as some extra mobility and also allowing us to duplicate this onto ourselves whenever we use it on an ally. This is going to be especially helpful for those entangling weeks. On the left side we'll take Healing Hands, reducing the cooldown of our Lay on Hands but more importantly increasing the healing of our Word of Glories by up to 100% based on the target's missing health allowing for some juicy off heals. As a rep paladin we're actually going to take all three capstones. On the left we gain access to Blessing of Dawn and Blessing of Dusk, buffing up our next finisher after spending three Holy Power of Dawn and after consuming this we proc a Blessing of Dusk reducing our damage taken and also cooling down our generators 10% faster. Down the middle we'll take everybody's favourite ability in Divine Toll and we'll buff up this cooldown further with Divine Resonance, causing us to fire out judgments every 5 seconds for 15 seconds. But finally we're going to take Vengeful Wrath on the bottom right to allow our Hammer of Wrath to always critically strike. So that's it for the class tree for raiding, moving on to the spec specific tree we'll start with the Templar Strikes build and then briefly go over the changes for the Crusading Strikes build after. On the right side we're going to take Holy Blade to cause our Blade of Justice to generate additional Holy Power, and then into Art of War to give our Autos a 20% chance to reset Blade of Justice. Rush of Light on the far right to grant us 5% haste whenever our single target ability is crit, and Vanguard's Momentum to give Hammer of Wrath an extra charge and generate an additional Holy Power on targets below 20% health for some extra execute. We take some defensive points down the middle in Guided Prayer and also Shield of Vengeance, and then into some more build defining nodes like Consecrated Blade and most notably Templar Strikes. Turning Crusader Strike into a two-part combo to smooth out the rotation. Avenging Wrath might to buff up our main cooldown with some extra crit, and then we'll build down to Wake of Ashes in the bottom right, bolstering up this ability with Seething Flames for some extra priority damage, and also Truth's Wake to burn the target for radiant damage over 9 seconds. Down the bottom we're also going to take Execution Sentence for a mini cooldown window every 30 seconds, and finally we take our main single target talent in Divine Arbiter, granting us a stack of the buff every time we deal Holy Strike damage, and at 25 stacks our next holy power spending ability will deal extra holy strike damage and also damage to all enemies within 6 yards. To quickly touch on the Crusading Strike build for single target 2, we'll take Improved Blade of Justice in the top right giving us 2 charges, and we're also going to reduce its cooldown by 2 seconds with Light of Justice on the left. We're obviously going to take Crusading Strike instead of Templar Strikes in the middle, building our Crusader Strike passively into our auto attacks, generating 1 holy power every 2 attacks. And finally, to play into this we'll lose Heart of the Crusader to take Zealot's Fervor to increase our auto attack speed. Now that's the raiding builds out the way, we'll move on to the Mythic Plus build, again you can play a Templar Strikes or Crusading Strikes build here so play whichever you prefer. For the sake of this guide we're going to use a Crusading Strikes build for the Mythic Plus build. Not too much is going to change in the class talent tree though Cleanse Toxins and also Blinding Light are incredible utility that you can bring to dungeons to deal with affixes and mobs. To take these points you can drop points in Obduracy and also Auras of the Resolute and you can also feel free to opt in to Blessing of Protection if you can spare the talent point, perhaps even switching it out with Blessing of Sacrifice dependent on the content you're clearing. Onto the Retribution tree, there's quite a few points that do change from the raiding build. In this build we're going to build down towards the bottom right for extra AoE damage, but before this we'll quickly bang a point in Tempest of the Lightbringer to project an additional wave from our Divine Storm that strikes enemies for 20% of the damage. Down the bottom left we'll swap to Final Reckoning for a beefy 1 minute cooldown that causes our spenders to deal 30% increased damage for 12 seconds, and then on the right side we're going to take Blade of Vengeance to cause our Blade of Justice to cleave, 
as well as Blessed Champion to also cause our Judgment and Crusader Strike to cleave. And finally, we'll build down into Burning Crusade and Searing Light. These cause some of our abilities to deal Radiant Damage instead, and these abilities have a chance to cool down an Explosion of Searing Light, dealing AoE Radiant Damage and leaving a Consecration in its wake. For the Templar Strikes build, we'll lose Blades of Light and Zealot's Fervor to pick up Heart of the Crusader and Vanguards of Justice if you prefer to play that build. For Retribution, the set bonus buffs Judgment and Hammer of Wrath's damage and effects. The two set increases the damage of both these abilities by 10% and gives them 15% increased crit damage. It also causes your Hammer of Wrath to apply greater judgment to enemies. This increases the damage enemies take from your Holy Power Spenders by an additional 15% and the four set also makes Hammer of Wrath hit four nearby targets for 20% of its damage. This proves the tier set to be good in all forms of encounters, whether it's pure single target, cleave, or AoE. Rep Paladins will use a priority system rather than a set rotation. You do not want to waste Holy Power in any situation, and this is the most important thing to remember as the majority of our damage comes from our spenders. Another important thing to note is you always want to be casting. Unless you are below 3 Holy Power, you can spend your Holy Power provided all your builders are on cooldown. And finally, the general rule between single target and AoE is you'll want to start using Define Storm instead of Templar's Verdict at 2 plus targets unless you have a priority target. The opener for Rep Paladins on single target will look like this. You'll start with a Blade of Justice. Then then we'll use Judgment, into your cooldown Avenging Wrath, then we're going to use Execution Sentence, into a Hammer of Wrath, then we'll use Templar's Verdict, followed by a Wake of Ashes, into another Templar's Verdict, and finally we'll use Divine Toll. After this opener, you'll want to follow this priority system. Your first priority is to use your Avenging Wrath cooldown, followed by your Execution Sentence cooldown. Then we're going to use Templar's Verdict at 5 Holy Power. If we have 2 or less Holy Power, here's where we're going to use Wake of Ashes. Our next priority is to use Divine Toll, followed by Hammer of Wrath. Then we're going to use Templar Slash if the combo is about to expire. After this, we'll use Blade of Justice if we have 3 or less Holy Power. Again, if we have 3 or less Holy Power, here's where we're going to use Judgment, and also if the Judgment debuff isn't present. Then we're going to use Templar's Verdict at 4 Holy Power. After this, we'll use Templar Strike or Templar Slash. And finally, we'll use Judgment. The AoE opener is very similar to the single target, but we'll be using Final Reckoning and also spending our Holy Power on Divine Storm instead of Templar's Verdict. Again, we're going to start with a Blade of Justice, into a Judgment, followed by Avenging Wrath and into a Hammer of Wrath. Then we're going to use Final Reckoning, Divine Storm after this, followed by a Wake of Ashes, into another Divine Storm, and finally we'll use Divine Toll. In AoE, your priority system will differ, so here it is. Again, our first priority is to use our Avenging Wrath cooldown. Here we're going to use Final Reckoning with as much Holy Power pulled as possible. Then at 5 Holy Power, we're going to use Divine Storm, followed by a Wake of Ashes at 2 or less Holy Power. Then we're going to use Divine Toll. If our Templar Slash combo is about to expire, here's where you'll use it. Then we're going to use Judgment on 3 or less Holy Power and also if the Judgment debuff isn't present, followed by a Blade of Justice at 3 or less Holy Power, then we're going to use Hammer of Wrath, then it's Divine Storm at 4 Holy Power, followed by Templar Strike or Templar Slash, and finally we'll use Judgment. If you are talented into Divine Arbiter or Empyrean Legacy, you'll occasionally need to use Templar's Verdict instead of Divine Storm to proc them. However, it does still follow the same priority as Divine Storm. Moving on to stats for the Retribution Paladin. As always, if you're ever confused if a piece of gear is an upgrade, I would always recommend you to sim your character first. That being said, Rep Paladins generally want high item level pieces as strength is their favoured stat. However, for secondary stats, you'll want to lean towards versatility and then crit and then haste after. Generally, Rhett doesn't really stack a secondary stat, so simming is always going to be your best bet. Here is a list of the recommended enchants to use on your Retribution Paladin. On the weapon, you'll go with Sophic Devotion. On the cloak, you'll go Graceful Avoidance. Chest, you'll go Waking Stats. Again, on the braces, you'll go for Devotion of Avoidance. On the belt, you'll go for the Shadow Belt Clasp. Legs, you'll apply a Fierce Armor Kit. Boots, you'll go for the Plain Runner's Breeze. And generally, on your rings, you'll go with a Devotion of Versatility, though I'd recommend to sim this enchant. Overall, the file I'd recommend for Retribution is the file of Tepid Versatility. Verse is a really strong secondary stat for Rhett and also provides some nice passive damage reduction too. Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power is your DPS potion of choice, with Refreshing Healing Potion being your best healing potion. Rhett Palas will want to sim for their best weapon buff, but generally Buzzing or Howling Rune, or even the Primal Whetstone or Weightstone are good choices. Ideally, you want to consume a Feast for the Strength buff, but Fated Fortune Cookies are a good backup as some personal food. For your Primalist gem, you'll want to use a Resplendent Illimited Diamond, and for your other gems, Radiant Malagite is generally a safe choice, but the best one to use will likely change dependent on your gear. 
Generally, I don't use too many macros for my Rep Paladin. However, I will leave a pace bin in the description of the macros that I do use. This first macro is a basic mouse over macro for Blessing of Freedom, allowing me to place Blessing of Freedom without actually targeting the player. And this means that I also get the buff as well. I use app focus macros for abilities like Rebuke so that I can focus on a priority target while kicking a focus target. Personally, I prefer an at cursor macro for final reckoning so I don't have the big green swirly to actually place it. And instead, I can just pre-place my cursor and then press my keybind so that it places it where I want it. However, I have also seen players just use an at player macro so that it places your final reckoning on yourself. Obviously, this means you just have to wait until you're actually in the pack to press it. Overall, Retribution Paladin feels amazing after the recent rework Blizzard gave them. They have very short cooldowns that are up for every single pack in Mythic Plus, with some of the best upfront bursts in the game, especially in AoE. That's not all though, if talented into the single target build, you can really shine on bosses too, with talents like Divine Arbiter beefing up that single target throughput. It's also basically impossible to die on the Rep Pallet, with a plethora of defensive cooldowns and the famous bubble for those oh shit moments. You'll bring tons of utility to you through auras like Devotion and Retribution Aura. You've got your different blessings to help out your group in difficult situations. And finally, you have some amazing off healing potential with spending your holy power on those word of glories to keep your team alive. You really cannot go wrong with the Rep Paladin at the moment. There's a reason it's the most played class. But that's all you need to know for the Retribution Paladin and that wraps up this guide. If this guide did help you out, then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.